What's up people we're at the sawmill today we're gonna be cutting up some cedar but uh first thing we're gonna do is change blades i want to show you how that's done on the norwood lm30 first of all we put our gloves on gloves because these things will cut you up really bad when you least expect it and on this mill you have a t-handle here that's a blade tensioner um the tension is already off right now but we make sure we loosen that up and knock it in best we can so it's easy to change. Um, we got these rubber straps. Often Pull it out. Clean some of this dirt out. Or sawdust, not dirt. So we've got the two rollers here and they have rubber belts on them. Um, we do want to inspect these rubber belts every time we change them out. And we typically want to change the belt or change the blade uh, before we sawmill every day pretty much. Um, sometimes I try to push them a little longer and get more life out of the blades. And sometimes that can bite you in the butt because you end up cutting the log and um, you can't get through knots or certain things. You end up with wavy boards just because the blade's so dull. But uh, so first off we have to loosen this plastic handle nut here on the blade guide and we loosen that move it out of the way so the blade can go past the bearing all right slide this out of the way there may be a better way to do it i don't know this is how i do it grab the blade make sure nobody's around to get hit by it and just like that there's the old blade this thing's pretty wore out it's not even sticking in my glove. Um, I got too much use out of this blade. I should have changed it out last week, but I pushed it through some pines and some cedars and things, some soft wood. So it wasn't a big deal. It was cut for myself, not for a customer. So uh, we just want to inspect these belts. They usually last a long time. Um, the belts, the blade rides on these belts. It kind of centers them up. And uh, if you ever see these belts a little loose right here, it's okay. That's kind of the way they're made. So uh, once they get really, really loose and sloppy or start breaking on you, that's when you want to replace them. But um, just inspect them good. Make sure there's no issues with them or there's no trash underneath them. Then we take our new blade without hitting anything. Because we don't want to break our tips off. And don't cut yourself. Yeah, don't cut yourself. Be very careful because this thing is sharp. If it falls and hits you in the face, it will cut your face. Then you'll get a nickname like Scarface. Scarface. We just gently slide that in and slip it over both of these wheels. We kind of want to center it up on the wheels best we can. This side, we'll get it the same as that side. Go ahead and give it a little tension so the wheels start riding right. And you can spin it a little bit just to watch it make sure it's not kicking off or hanging off one end or another make sure it's not going to come flying off everything looks pretty good it's riding pretty straight anyway once we get that on we can slide our blade, gl blade guide guard back in and it's good to go and that's how you change a blade one thing you want to keep a check on is this tensioner right here for the belt if you noticed uh mine's got a lot of slop in it i just noticed that um i did notice it was slipping in some of the wood the other day and that would be why right there 
thought my blade was super dull, but that tensioner seems to be loose. We're gonna tighten that up. All right, when tightening this thing up, you got a couple bolts here and pretty much everything on this mill is almost everything is 9 16 so we're gonna loosen up the tensioner bracket first so we can easily give this some tension and we've got a set screw here an adjustment screw that tightens the tension on it now i know we don't want this super tight we don't want it too tight but we do want it tighter than that we want it tight enough where it's not going to slip while we're cutting can't get a wrench in here on this thing so you should probably shouldn't use pliers like this but it's not very hard to turn so I'm not burgering up the bolt that's already feeling better I say we don't want to over tighten it and stretch our belt and put a whole lot of tension on this pulley but we do want enough to uh, that we're not slipping a belt feels pretty good now the thing is i haven't tightened this since i got this mill um this mill is about six when months. i get it last october november yeah it's about 16 so maybe six months old now and i haven't tightened this yet i've checked it in the past and it was fine but obviously i didn't haven't checked it in the last month or so and it's loosened up all right so our tension's good we're not over tight we're good to go there um I wish there was a set screw on this we could lock this down but there's not so now we're just going to tighten up our the right direction we're going to tighten up our bracket our tensioner bracket Ow. don't touch the blade with your hands you probably should wear gloves doing this too because i just nicked my finger i need an extension on this thing oh yeah i nicked my knuckle with the blade Better if you have an extension with your socket. But all right, so it feels pretty good. Um, I think our tensioner nut may have just backed off our bolt here because it doesn't have a set screw. All right, we're good to go there. Now we just make sure our blade is still tracking right. Everything there looks good. And we'll definitely know when we start cutting wood. See when you don't wear gloves. Bad. Button this back up and we'll be ready to load a log on. Hey, the fun part. Time to get that log. What are we cutting today? We're we'll cutting this cedar here up. It's pretty straight. Um, it's got a little bit of bark left on it. It's been sitting for about 10 years or so, somewhere around there. I was building a uh, pole barn on the back of the property many years ago, and I used these cedars for that pole barn, and uh, some projects got changed, and these things were just standing up in the air, uh, buried in the ground. I cut this large chunk of cement. It looks like a donut. Cut that off the end of it, but I've got about six more I've got to go get. But that one there still had the cement on it. Um, we're going to cut this end off real quick. Actually, you know what? I might leave this on here. I don't know, I need to measure the length of the log first, but but this ought to make some pretty wood. We're going to cut this up and see what kind of boards we can get out of it. What are you doing that? Go ahead and add our lubrication to the blade. We use a little bit of this pine saw, uh, mainly to keep the pitch off the blades, but we're not really cutting pine. We're cutting some fairly dry cedar, so... Um, I think pretty much straight water will work or maybe nothing at all. Now we'll add some water. This is a three gallon tank, if you're wondering. Which I had a little bit in it already. We're just gonna put these two gallons in and what little bit of pine saw I'll put in there.
gas on. Give it some choke.
right now I got it down to six inches on this side we're gonna do a flip and we're gonna do some one by sixes out of the cedar it's looking pretty nice it's not as red as I thought it was gonna be really thought it'd have a lot more heart to it or not as dried out anyway but uh we're gonna flip it and get some one by sixes and see what they look like Well, we finished cutting that log. Let me show you what it looks like. There it is, fellas. That's Eastern Red Cedar. It's not as red as some of this wood. Some of this is a lot older and a lot drier. Um, the drier it gets, um, the color comes out of it. Some of these pieces are purplish. Um, so the heart of it was pretty dark, but it had a lot of light wood in it too, just because it was so old and so dry. Like I said, this thing's been cut down and Hell, it's probably been cut for 20 years, but I know it's been uh, sitting in the ground, standing straight up for the last 10 years. Flip this one over and show you what it looks like. It's real pretty wood. Yeah. Beautiful wood. We got some more to cut. Um, how many we get out of this? I didn't even count. I didn't count either. Um, some of it has some spots in it, like this is on the edge. It's like kind of a rotty, but. Most of it's really nice. I does notice this on this end. Had a couple of spots here, but that'll just get chopped off and the rest of it will be used. So we've got seven one by sixes and four one by eights. Uh, the one by eights are not that great. They do have a little live edge on them just because they were the edge cuts. Um, we'll probably end up cutting those back down to six inches just to pretty those up and a little bit of slab. So the tree did pretty good all in all. It's not the darkest, but it is pretty. Well, that's that log. We'll be cutting some more soon and we'll get more video of it. Uh, we appreciate you watching. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our videos if you hadn't already. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. If, if there's any, any questions you have, anything you'd uh, recommend us do differently, just put it in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. That's it, thanks. What do you call that? Bearing? Uh, God bearing? Blade God bearing? Bearing God? Yeah. It's on. It's on. <laughs> so first off, we have to loosen this.